We're back with part two of the Tome documentary series. Uh, in, in part one, we got the meat of it out of the way. We wanted to distinguish between melancholy, as we generally understand it now, and melancholia, or the inspired form of melancholia. I hope you enjoyed the first video. Now, with the second one, we're going to apply a little bit of what we mean by inspired melancholia and focus on children. And I hope you find it interesting and surprising and maybe a perspective that, that you hadn't considered or heard before. Before we get into part two of the video, I wanted to actually show you what Tome looked like. This giant thing is Tome Volume 1, Vampirism. It's a huge book. It's pretty heavy. It's like five, six pounds. And I'm going to have to figure out how to show this to you with muscles from working in the studio too long. One of the things that this does is it gives us an incredible amount of space to play with design and present the works. Here's the table of contents. And I can show you some different artists in this book. My God, this is big. Here's Christopher Mitten, an incredible sequential artist, comic book artist, who did a five-page story. And you just see these enormous, beautiful comic book pages. And his section was, is, is starts with an interview like every featured artist. This one, he was interviewed by another comic book artist, Riley Rosmo. And further on in the book, you have someone like the clothing designer, Cambriel, does gorgeous work. And she actually had three pieces that we published here that told a sort of a strange story. And she was interviewed by Neil Gaiman, the well-known uh, writer. You have Dave McKean, you have Richard Kirk, you have the awesome Matthew Bone, interviewed by Wolves Mouth, the chef, the Underground Supper Club in LA. You have Scott Radke, and here you, you have, we actually have a close-up of one of the faces. And the pieces you see be, behind me are actually by Scott. Uh, Shane Pierce, you just open this book up to any page. Jonathan Wayshack, again, more sequential pages. Just This is 24 by 18. And these featured artists, again, have interviews. Man, this is heavy. <laughs> David Tibet, current 93, incredible, incredible musician. This is, of course, one of the best out there right now, as far as I'm concerned, Jason Sean Alexander. And he just, he combined oil paintings and pen and ink and did this incredible story that he drew and wrote. Ben Templesmith, who you all know, who's here part of 44 Flood. And in the back of the book, we have contributing artists that have one or two pages as well. This is Ellison. My God, I can't even hold this anymore. <laughs> and Alberto Ruiz and Richard Friend. And I'm going to put this down because I can't even hold it anymore. That's how big this book is. Tome 2 is exactly the same, 12 by 18 inches, 200 pages. And in the back, there's a sleeve and it contains a CD. Um, the first volume of Tome, I believe, had 12 or 13 music tracks on it. I'm very proud of that. The same will be this uh, true of Tome Volume 2. We have incredible contributors to the music CD, like Sage Francis and Fink. Incredible people. So that's the book. They're very heavy. When we get them delivered, we're very scared. Uh, we pack them as well as we can and, and pray, just like everyone else, that they arrive safely. And we continue to work on finishing tome two to submit it for print in November. But for now, part two of Melancholia, and in this case, Children and Melancholia. This one will be on the inspired melancholia in children and what we have to learn from it. We have much to learn from it. The first thing, of course, is that we, we ask about melancholia and inspired melancholia and melancholy itself. And we know that people suffer from this, live through it, create by it. But then we, we don't really understand how it is that children involve themselves in it. I would submit to you that children spend nine months in a trance-like state, wherein they are busy assisting in the building of themselves and feeling things they really don't understand and hearing things. 
that they really do not quite comprehend. And yet, within this trance-like, dream-like nine-month stage, they are in melancholia, inspired melancholia. Then they come out, and the world is a wonderful, strange, and beauteous place, filled with marvels and horrors and scary things and delightful things. And they learn, they learn how to make, to create, to express. They think, they imagine, they play. They are inspired melancholics who produce. As one might understand, this, of course, becomes somewhat more difficult as they grow older. But what we can never forget when we look for melancholia and its causes is that the child does spend nine months in a state of melancholia, deep trance-like consciousness. And as a great man once said, all children are artists. The difficulty is to remain an artist when you grow up. The images that children produce vary, but they always seem to have a, a newness, a joy, a, a desire to be and see and say that adult artists have to struggle to release later. Now, of course, as a child, they can make a, a flower that looks like flower itself. They make inappropriate art showing penises and smiling faces, murder and mayhem scenes. But they always show a delight in them, a willingness to see that which is there. And sometimes these young artists will terrify we older people by how much they can in fact see and convey with the simplest of lines with contrasting light and shade only and this is the way that their their love of being comes out it is what adult artists try and try to attain children have no difficulty with the peacock's tail the cote pavo being shown to them, for the whole world is a corde pavo to them. And even our Mr. Dolly, who struggled throughout his life to reintroduce his childlike innocence, Pablo Picasso, who did the same thing, confronted the society's interest in Sigmund Freud and his machinations of tying everything to the most basal of human instincts. But again, to steal from Picasso a comment, it takes a long time to become this young. Uh, 